was early September 1950. That was a year of the whiz kids. 230 plus of us walked up a long, long cement path, crossed the manicured lawn, and entered the hallowed halls of Central High School. The school, the second oldest public high school in the United States, would be our academic home for the next four years. We came from everywhere in Philadelphia, all neighborhoods, all sizes, all backgrounds. But that day, 50 years ago, we all walked together. Not only did we walk into a paragon of education, but a didactic castle and tower of terror. The school, which was founded in 1836, had produced some of the finest educators, jurists, physicians, and clergy in the world. They performed it with intimidation, harassment, and emotional pressure. They took no prisoners. Sidney Farbish, Blaker, Del Gershio, Sindel, and other fathers of fright, followed by Greenstein, Weimar, Bristol, Penny Packer, and Dr. Raska. Within a few weeks of matriculation, we learned to be spastic, stuttering fellows. But we had five minutes to reload between classes. And if that wasn't enough anxiety, welcome to physical education, where names like Patchell, Peffel, and Bennett, new forms of torment like climbing four-story ropes sliding down, believing your skin from the palms of your hands, hanging from iron rings, performing crucifixions, or doing push-ups and pull-ups. At least we forget that enlightening hygiene aid course taught by Ev Hort, where we learned to fear women. By our senior year, we had grown into young men, physically and emotionally. The doctors of doom were mellowing, the tyrants were becoming advisors, and the ogres changed into valued friends. The terror-dreaded panic was the fuel that drove the engine along the track to success, its final destination. Each course was a station, each class a railroad tie. And then we had graduation, 100 degrees, heavy black gowns and caps, when we introduced ourselves to the entertaining voice of Leon Obermeyer, who predicted our futures. Since that moment 50 years ago, many things have passed and wonderful transformations have taken place. We've become older gentlemen, successful, prosperous, few even famous. Now the moment has arrived to reassemble, to reminisce, to remember, to praise and to give thanks to Central High School for those very moments of madness. The 202 excelled by none, its merits rate supreme, our record tops in work sports fun, perfection is our theme. And as each of us thinks back, let us lift our glasses in heartfelt appreciation and sing. Let others sing of college days their alma mater's true, but when we raise our voices, it is only high for you. We'll ne'er forget those days gone by, those glorious days of old, when off we sang the praises of the crimson and the gold. Dear high, dear central high, yes, you can go home again. Others sing of college days, their alma mater true, but when we raise our voices, tis only high for you. We'll never forget those days gone by, those glorious days of old, when off we sang the
I don't want to tell you the story about the hooker. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just got lucky. I had a whole bunch of guys uh, that uh, went through with me. That was Mark and Foxy and, uh, and Moore, Buzzy Barron. And we all decided, I think, uh, individually or whatever, uh, that Central was the place to be. And uh, fortunately, we were admitted. Well, I guess. Uh, for one thing, it was getting used to all boys, because we'd been in co-ed schools up till that time. Yeah. Came up against a lot of very, very bright guys, and uh, so you had to work a little harder. I was never what you would consider a great student, so. Yeah. I mean, that was a very happy time, you know? The 50s were great. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of the teachers, after we got there, we got to know some of these teachers, which were, who were phenomenal. Like who? Aunt Shibby. Yeah with his phosphorant uh, red uh, suspenders and, uh, and uh, socks, you know. Yeah. Somebody had asked, when's the, when's the period over, Mr. Shibby? Is it when the gong bongs, you know? And ah. I, I mean, these were characters, Uncle Joe and Dish, uh, Rigberg, uh, uh, Raska, Dr. Raska, uh, uh, two steps into the future, three steps into the past, you're now in the past blue perfect. Uh, we had uh, Jimmy uh, DePriest's uh, aunt, uh, Marion Anderson, come and sing at the school. Really? And uh, it was just exceptional. Jimmy be for a banquet yeah. celebrating our graduation. Uh, Jimmy played and I sang, uh, and I'll do a little, little bit for you here. Uh, they tried to tell us we're too young, too young to ever be in love. Well, they were all wrong. We weren't too young and we fell and we fell in love. We had great times. Uh, we even smoked out on the South Lawn. Uh, we didn't know from drinking. We didn't know from, from drugs. Uh, it was a very innocent, wonderful period of our lives. Welcome back. Ticket out. Welcome back to that same old place that you laughed about. Well, the names have all changed since you hung around, but those dreams have remained and they've turned around. Who'd have thought they'd need ya? Who'd have thought they'd need ya? Something that made you come back again And what could 
o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Put your flat bags on. Join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes one. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, rock, rock till broad daylight. We're gonna rock, we're gonna rock around the clock tonight. When the clock strikes two, three, and four. Starting tonight, America's number one rated television show will have a new and improved theme song. Just exactly what it will sound like is one big mystery. What is it? Only a few insiders have even heard the song, the Cosby crew and members of the Oregon Symphony. Now, this may seem like an unlikely group to be in cahoots with The Cosby Show, but not only did the symphony perform the new song, but conductor James DePriest was asked to write and arrange it. The greatest challenge is to be able to come up with something that the buyer, in this case, Cosby, that the buyer wants. The relationship between James and Bill goes way back. In the early 50s, they were high school classmates. They didn't keep in touch much until last year when Bill asked James to come up with a symphonic sound for his 55-second theme song. That's the last note of the piece. Oh. That's the only pe note of the piece that you've heard. James accepted the top-secret challenge, but only after clearing up a few things with Cosby's music director, Stu Gardner. He says, how many musicians? I said, 85. He says, 85? He says, are all of them organs? I said, I beg your pardon? So he said, well, Bill said you're the music director of the Oregon Symphony. I said, not the Oregon Symphony, the Oregon Symphony. In June, the song was recorded by the Oregon Symphony without rehearsal inside the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall. Again, it all took place in secrecy, behind closed doors. 
the protection is in case Bill doesn't like it, he can change it and nobody's going to be, uh, nobody's going to know. Homily, there's 
no fool like an old fool. <laughs> I want to tell you, when you go, you're smitten like a ton of bricks you go. Like an 18-year-old shit. You go. You got to have it. The whole family's you know, what the hell's the rush? I got to have it. I can't live my life. <laughs> Ourselves and to help the school. That's good. All right. Yeah. All right. 